Hey everyone, this is the Block TV Podcast, where we talk about music, movies, video games, politics, and whatever else. So let's get this started. Hey everyone, how's it going? There's about six, seven minutes left till uh, midnight, so it's Monday. And uh, the ACLU has just sued Ben Carson. Um, this is brought to you by the ACLU.org, a nonpartisan um, organization that in D.C. where they fight for basically our civil liberties. They're the American Civil Liberties Union. Um, brought to you by the ACLU, it is no accident that much of the United States remains segregated. Decades of slavery, Jim Crow laws, discriminatory lending practices, and international policy choices, intentional policy to- choices. Sorry about that. At the federal, state, and local level, most of which were in. Enha- enacted within the last 80 years, helped make it so. The Fair Housing Act passed in 1968, just a week after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, was meant to address the decades of discrimination that led to such segregation. The FHA made it illegal to discriminate against anyone buying or renting a home because of their race, color, religion, sex, or national region. It's since been admitted to include family status and disability, too. But it is also sought to replace segregation in America with truly integrated and balanced living patterns by requiring agencies to affirmatively further fair housing in all programs related to housing. The FHA brought about a sea change with respect to individual housing discrimination, America's Americans today would be shocked to find an apartment listing that indicated black people or women with children could not apply. But its promise of integrating neighborhoods has been left largely unfulfilled. As former Vice President Walter Mondel, who co-authored the legislation, pointed out recently in a New York Times opt, the FHA is the most ignored of the era's civil rights laws. It seems like Secretary Ben Carson, head of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, a fucking brain surgeon, seriously, would like to keep it that way. In January, the agency suspended the only regulation to ever give the FHA real leverage in ending segregation. The move puts housing integration in serious jeopardy, so we're challenging it in court. Since it was enacted, successive presidential administrations largely ignored their affirmative obligations to create fair housing, allowing federal government's dollars to flow uninterrupted to cities and towns that have policies in place that maintain segregation. Then in 2015, the Obama administration finally began to seriously address this issue by putting in place a regulation called the Affirmatively Further Fair Housing rule the hffh affh the rule required cities and towns to create a plan to address segregation discrimination and to lay out concrete goals for bringing fair housing and opportunity to members of all the groups protected by the fha before receiving government money examples of these goals include building affordable housing in areas well served by transit and prohibiting landlords from discriminating against people who use government subsidy to pay part of the rent uh the first years it was of the effect it became their little ad kind of uh there we go in the first few years it was in effect it became clear that the hffh process gave guarantees an important new tool to attack the old problem of segregation. HAFFH also provided valuable in addressing fair housing issues that were previously unnoticed. For example, the city of Ithaca, New York, used to use the AFFH process to prioritize addressing policies and practice practices that displace victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. But in January, HUD announced that it would not require guarantees to engage in the AFFH process until 2020. 
at the earliest and not because of the way the process is timed, not until 2024 in most cases. The suspension means that the HUD will continue to give out money without doing anything to check whether guarantees are using it in ways that perpetuate segregation and undermine fair housing. During his presidential campaign, Secretary Carson analogized the AFFH rule to the failed socialist experiment and dismissed it as a government attempt to legislate racial equality. But the AFFH rule is nothing of the sort. In fact, it gives local governments wide latitude to create locally appropriate solutions to housing issues that affect not only people of color, but also with families, with children, people with disabilities, and victims of crime, among other things. Not only is it unacceptable to delay the fulfillment of the FHA's promise any longer, it's also illegal. If HUD wanted to suspend the AFFH rule, the law requires that it provide the public with notice and an opportunity to weigh in and HUD would have to replace the AFFH rule with something else that fulfills its statutory duty to affirmatively further fair housing. That's why we filed suit today on behalf of the National Fair Housing Alliance, Texas Low Income Housing Information Service, and Texas Appleseed three lending fair housing organizations who work has been severely undermined by the suspicious suspension joining us to the co-counsel are the law firm of Wellman Dane and Colfax the lawyers committee for civil rights under law the ends the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, the Poverty and Race Research Action Council and Public Citizens Litigation Group all the AFFH rule requires is that the community seeking federal housing dollars take steps to counteract the history of government-sponsored segregation and to promote equal housing opportunities for all as the Fair Housing Act turns 50 am in a presentially and illegally divided America. It's the least we can, we can do. So this is on the ACL, ACLU's uh, website. Um... And uh, the thing that pisses me off about Ben Carson is this is the same guy who lived off fucking governmental assistance. How is it that this brain surgeon can go on and on and talk shit about this being socialist when, you know, all of us just want health care, man. That's it. That's that's all people want. We just want fucking... I mean, think about it. It's not that hard if people work together. It's just that people don't want to think about it. We want to live in a safe world. We want health care. We want gun violence. I mean, there was 22 shootings in Sweden last year. There was more than 12,000 last year in the United States. <laughs> it's like it's just getting insane it's like you know I mean and we already have and here's the thing we already have socialistic tendencies when FDR did the social security act that is socialism um, a lot of the stuff that Obama said and the thing is a lot of people go he's a socialist Socialism isn't that bad of a thing. Denmark has been ranked the happiest country in the world, and they're socialist. They have maternity leave. They have less gun violence in the country. People have health care. Everyone has health care, which is a right. Less gun violence, and people are happier there. I mean, it's no wonder that Coca-Cola is slogan is open a bottle of happiness. And when you look at the curvature and the script of coca-cola there is a denmark flag inside of coca-cola logo and their slogan is open a bottle of happiness so yeah there you go even coca-cola knows that if denmark can be happy opening a bottle of coke should make you happy too and look at sweden same thing and their education system is better than ours i mean these these people here in the United States, they can't even read an analog clock for crying out loud. So I'm glad that the ACLU is taking part and they're suing Ben Cawson. 
Um, I'm like, this guy lived off food stamps. So I'm glad he's being sued. I think Ben Carson is an idiot. I don't know how the fuck he became, you know, housing and development. It's like, dude, you're a brain surgeon. Seriously, like, the Trump administration is ridiculous. It's like, oh, let's have this guy part of this part. And let's put this guy at the... It's like... It's like putting a guy who... You you have a chef and then you put him at economics. It's like, this guy's a chef. Why can't you just have him cook for you in the White House? Why do you need him to do economics for you? He won't know that. You know what I mean? It's like taking an accountant and telling him to make you a souffle. It's like, dude, he's an accountant. <laughs> I just think this country's going downhill with just bl- dumb shit, man. It's just stupid. Anyway, thanks for listening to the Blog TV podcast. You can like, comment, subscribe, do what you got to do, and uh, I'll keep podcasting because I'm an American and I can do what I want. So thanks for listening.